How's everybody this morning? Let's see if I can get all my stuff lined out here. We're going to start off a little different this morning. If you join me, we're going to take out our Bibles. We're going to go to Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse 17. If you join me there, let's look at it all, look at it together. As we read this scripture together, I believe you can all agree, and you will agree, that this scripture relates closely to our world today. And this uh, piece of scripture is a uh, Paul's letter to the Ephesian people that offers instructions for Christian living. And Paul wrote this particular letter while he was in prison in Rome. He sent it to the church in Ephesus where he had spent three years, three years in fruitful ministry there. Ephesus was a corrupt city, though. That was the problem going on there, which is, you know, it's now uh, a part of the modern-day Turkey, if you're trying to figure out where that is. And the Apostle Paul knew this, and he urged the Ephesians to change, that they were going to have to change, that uh, some of the things they had going on there was not uh, uh, pleasing to God, and Christianity was not that they had going on there. It, it wasn't compatible with the Ephesians' current lifestyle. Rather, Paul's telling them, hey, you got to change some things. What you got going on here, this, this isn't pleasing to God. God's not going to endorse this, and you got to make some changes. So that's what this letter is all about that he sent to them. So we're going to pick up uh, Ephesians once again, chapter 4, verse 17. It says, so I, tell, so I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the fertility of their thinking. Rather, right here, he's saying, stop living as the people who don't live as God would want them to. Rather, don't live a lifestyle outside of what God would expect. And that's what they were doing. And he's saying, hey, you got to stop. you got to stop because this isn't the living or the kind of living that God's going to endorse. And it says they are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. If we think about that, isn't that what we're seeing in society today that looks just like that? Many people don't have any understanding, and the understanding that they do have is pretty dark. It's, it doesn't fit the narrative of what our country's about, and people seem to be ignorant. And that ignorance is because of the hardening of their heart, which causes them not to listen and not to truly seek the truth in everything going on. So with a hardened heart, they don't look to go that way. They, they, they're okay with the lifestyle they have. And we pick up there, it says, having lost all sensitivity. Since their hearts have hardened, all sensitivity has become none to the things that are not right or evil. So they're, they're not sensitive things. They've gotten comfortable with what's going on in our society, and many people have. Wrong is wrong. But some people are just going along with the flow with it being okay. Well, it's not okay. There are things that with these hardened hearts that it causes so many problems. And it says right here, they have given them still themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity and they are full of greed. Amen. Exactly what's going on in our society today. The point here is that the lack of sensitivity has caused people to engage in anything that makes them feel good. Anything at all. If it makes me feel good, I'm going to do it. It doesn't matter what it is, including greed, money. Money's driving just about everything going on in our society today. Somebody's getting rich off all this stuff, and it's not us, right? might be one of you, but it's not me. And what happens is all this breeds a sinful nature in people. It's, it's normally, I mean, the temptation to get in the middle of some of this and make money off of it, it's too tempting. People aren't strong enough. So they begin to, if you call them out or you mention something about what's going on with it, with them or society, then because they have hardened hearts, they don't want to hear it. They're not going to listen to the truth. That's what I'm trying to say here. Not going to listen to the truth. And they're not going to, they're not going to listen, period, but not seeking the truth in every situation. If we believe everything that comes out on social media, then boy, we'd really be messed up, right? 
So you've got to find a boundary, and you've got to determine that. You don't need people in your ear, and you don't need people pushing you all the time. It's up to people. God gave us, he gave us a mind to use. He gave us common sense. Well, he gave some people common sense, because some people missed it, right? I mean, that's truth. But we've got to determine what truth is and what truth looks like. So if we pick up that, it says that, however, it is not the way of life. You learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work. Woo! Woo, woo, woo! Wait just a minute, Reg. What's that all about? Work? That's a scary word. Right? For many people today, that's a scary word. Scary word. They don't want to work. And that's the problem. They've been misguided in what's going on in their minds. Doing something useful with their own hands. That's what the Bible says. That they may have something to share with those in need. Rather, make something of yourself and contribute to society. Right? Get off the free ride. In society today, you will not believe how many people have children and won't get married because they're drawn off the government. They're riding the government. Right? And if you're one of them, I'm sorry. You're wrong. I'm paying for you to do that. Right? That's not the way it works. The Bible tells us we need to work. We need to make something of ourselves and do it for God. Right? Laziness, it's all through the Bible about not being lazy. That's sinful. So if you're not willing to work and you don't have anything or you have a miserable life or you whatever's going on, it's not because of anybody else. It's because of you. Nearly every situation. Now, there's exceptions. I know. Don't send me an email. I know there's people that struggle and they have hard times and maybe health issues or what's going on. But a lazy person, I just don't deal with who they yet. I work for everything I, I have, and many of you have too, and I'm not willing just to give it away. You know, I'd probably give it away before I'd have somebody steal it from me. Amen? So go work for what you need and be part of the society. Be a contribution to this country, not a deficit to it. Amen? And do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their deeds, I mean their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Encourage one another. You know what? We can pick people apart. We can go, we can pick them apart for anything they do. I mean, it's real easy to do. But you're going to get more mileage out of encouragement. Reflection of Christ. Encourage people to do something different. If there's something going on in their life and it bothers you, go talk to them. Encourage them. Say, hey, there's a better way to do this. There's opportunities everywhere to make this better for you. And really what it's saying, stop spreading untruth. And gossip. Oh, gossip. It only causes damage and it spreads anger. Do we not see that in our society today? That all the untruth and all the gossip that's going on in our society today, is, it's, it's doing that. It's, it's causing damage everywhere. In families. I mean, when families, I see more damage done there. And it even spreads anger everywhere. All the angry stuff going on, it's, it's just gotten out of control. And it says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave you. Bible's real clear. If you don't forgive another person and you carry unforgiveness with you, God's not going to forgive you. So if you're looking for some forgiveness... You got to give it first. Amen. You know, when we become Christian believers, our minds are renewed and furnished with a lot of God's mind. Think like God, right? And we can see things as God sees them and make godly decisions because we are a new person in Christ. 
that old person's gone. And, and it doesn't matter whether your family or friends or whoever doesn't believe you're a new person in Christ. Just show them. Show them, right? They're going to be the biggest doubters. I'm going to be honest with you. Your family and friends are going to be harder on you than everybody else because they're going to know how you were, and they're going to say, that can't be the person I knew. Show them. Be like Christ. As Christians, our uniqueness in the world has made, is made apparent by our mood, our morality, our money, our mouth, and our manners. You want to make a difference, it starts right there. What are we doing? We need to control our anger, encourage and lift others while showing grace in everything we do. I've been reminded about that this morning, wasn't I? <laughs> Even me. Sometimes I forget. I forget to, man, I got to show grace in that even though I don't, I'm not on board, you know, but I'm not going to help this person along if I'm not encouraging and show grace to them. The Bible warns us against corruption in both words and deeds. In 1948, Jackie Robinson became the first American to play Major League Baseball. He faced stiff opposition in the form of balls being deliberately thrown at him by pitchers, base runners who dug their spikes into his shins, fans who mocked him, and even death threats. Jackie Robinson was a competitive scraper, scrapper, but he also knew that the right way to fight was to demonstrate meekness and forbearance. In other words, his behavior was Christ-like. His strength changed the face of baseball in the process, helped change the face of America. Amen. Amen. Without a doubt, there's some things that we all could change in our lives that would benefit others if we looked at things a little bit differently. I had this story, and, and it you know, when we're sitting here talking about Back in, the, in our message here about how we've hardened our hearts at things, how bad it's gotten. It's gotten worse than most people think. There's a lot of hardened hearts in, in our society today. And I found this story I found interesting, and it's a good example. It's about a 15-year-old boy who lay bleeding from, the head, from a head wound just steps away from a hospital but could not be rescued because rules required that ambulances bring in patients. Frustrated police officers finally carried the fatality, the fatally wounded Christopher Sears into Rainswood Hospital, but he died a short time later. Witnesses at the scene said hospital emergency workers refused to come to Cersei's aid despite pleas quoting hospital rules. A hospital spokesman simply stated that emergency room personnel were barred from dispensing care outside the hospital. When rules and regulations get in the way of common sense and compassion, it's a sign of hearts becoming hardened. Amen? As believers, we have been made a new creation in Christ in which we need to remove ourselves, remove ourselves out of the control and the power of the world and let God control it. Put it all in his hands and ask for his control instead of letting the world control everything we do. We have the power in our hands to help people who are hurting, who are without hope, or who, are, who need encouragement. We have that power. God has given us that power in our hands, in our words, in our minds. And it comes from Kind and truthful words. You got to remember, how many times do we really twist that truth around a little bit? Are we really being truthful or everything? Are we twisting the truth to fit our narrative? A lot of times we do. Just depends on the situation. And in the same way that angry words can cause hurt and discouragement if we use angry words toward a person. In the same way. So we can either lift people up or we can <laughs> drive them down by words and by the way we act and the things we do, the most important quality we need is to be like Christ in our manners. Manners? Does anybody know what that word means anymore? Bad conduct tarnishes his holy name, causing us 
each individual to become ignorant to God's truth and morally insensitive to others. The world has become challenging to the Christian faith. The Bible tells us we will be persecuted for our faith, amen? But we don't have to live and believe as the world does. Even though that's going to happen, we don't have to. Are we ready to stand up for Christ? Are we ready to share his truthful word and be the kind of person that would draw others to him? Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. You know, the Bible's warned us that there will be terrible changes of things and people in this world. And that we should be careful, very careful, not to fall into false teaching and untruths. Right now, trying to figure out the truth, uh, especially through social media and other people speaking and people that are, are just kind of all into themselves, it's, it's hard to determine what truth truly is anymore. The Bible's not going to lie to you. If you're following God's word and you follow scripture to back up things being said, it'll open your eyes even more. If you'll join me, we're at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. As we read this scripture, totally without a doubt, take this into your heart and compare it from what we're seeing and hearing today. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the, uh, living and the dead, and in the view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in, <clears throat> in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all duties of your ministry. Does that not sound like a lot of stuff going on today? It's scary. I know we've heard a lot of disturbing things when you look at this scripture. It can be kind of scary. Things going on in the world can be really disturbing. But even with all the negative things going on in our world today, even with all that, if we have built our lives on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ, we can continue to stand and endure what comes our way. So what's your foundation built on? Amen? It, here's a story. It happened in a small town in northeast Pennsylvania. The community leaders had built a small red brick building that would serve as their city hall. The same building was designed to be used as the local firehouse and police department. For that tiny community, this building was a symbol of careful planning, sacrifice, and commitment on behalf of the town's people. Hundreds of people were in attendance for the ribbon-cutting ceremony the day that the building was dedicated. It was a momentous occasion for that small community. But just two months after the dedication of the building, it became painfully obvious that the city had a significant problem with their new symbol of pride. Giant cracks began to appear on the outside walls of the building. They began to notice that the windows wouldn't shut completely. Doors would no longer close properly. The floor shifted, leaving ugly gaps around the floor covering. And then, as, it, as if to add insult to injury, the roof began to leak. Within just a few months, the building had to be evacuated, much to the embarrassment of the builder and the disgust of the taxpayers. It was later discovered that blasts from a nearby mining area were slowly but effectively destroying the building. Silently, down beneath the earth's surface, beneath the foundation, small shifts were taking place that caused the entire foundation to crack. You couldn't see it or even feel it on the surface, but quietly, way down deep, the structure was being weakened at its very foundation. In time, the building had to be condemned, and it was later demolished. 
when you have trouble with your foundation, you have real trouble. Right down here in Corsicana, I don't know many of you get down in that area. There used to be a um, Gander Mountain built over there by the Home Depot and all that on that side. And they actually had to shut down the Gander Mountain. I think they tore the whole building down. And some of those buildings around there had the same problem going on. But I walked in there one day, and one part of the floor was this high, and the other part was down there, walking in the front doors. Because they had built that building on an old stock tank that was filled up with trash back in the day. And someone that didn't do peer tests to check for a good foundation on it. So it started to cause problems everywhere. Our lives are like that. If we don't, if we're not sure what foundation we're, we're standing on, then we could find out that we've got some cracks. We've got some problems going on also. Our solid foundation is Jesus Christ and his word. Amen. A disintegrating foundation cannot give adequate support to its structure. There's no way. And although in this building it's been very gra gradual, and it's been very gradual what's going on in our world today, we've been hearing some cracking in the foundation of this great nation right now. We've been hearing it. It's cracking. It's been slowly getting there, right? So we've got to pay attention. We've got to pay attention to what goes on in our country, in our nation, in our world, and in our lives. We might have just begun as a hairline crack in the beginning, but they're quickly becoming more serious faults. And the fault lines in the foundation of our nation is happening because we moved away from biblical worldview and started following the world itself. Many people have. Less and less people go to church. Less and less people believe in God anymore. People don't fear God anymore. So we've moved so far away that we're starting to see many cracks in our foundation. Not only in our country, but it starts in our homes. With our kids, our grandkids, our family, our friends. The foundation of life is described as being spiritual in nature. This means we're constantly being formed spiritually, whether for good or evil. Remember that. Either way, we fail to realize that the process of spiritual shaping is a reality of human existence. Everyone is in the process of spiritual formation at this time. Even though we hold every decision we make, Every action we take, every emotion we allow to shape our behavior, every response we make to the world around us, every relationship we enter into, every reaction we have toward the things that surround us and impinge upon our lives, all of these, little by little, are shaping us to some kind of being. All those little things add up to one big thing. Amen? We're being shaped into either the wholeness of the image of Christ or a horribly destructive caricature of that image, a false image. Destructive, not only to ourselves, but also to others, for we inflict our brokenness upon them. And that's going on in society today. There's so many broken people that they want to point out everybody else and blame them for their brokenness. The answer is we have to be like Christ. Some people go, well, you know, I try, but these people push my buttons. Well, I think some people push Jesus' buttons, and he got a little aggravated. Don't think it's wrong if you get angry, if you get aggravated, even though anger is a sin. But it's going to happen. But it's how you handle that anger and how you take on that sin that makes a difference of what you appear to everybody else. If our foundation is built on the solid, uh, solid truth of Jesus Christ, then we can endure all the hard-hearted and insensitive people that come into our contact with us. And maybe even get them to listen a little bit as we share what God's done for us and what his true word says that he can and will do for them also. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. We're getting ready to close here.
Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Is your foundation built on the rock today? The solid rock of Jesus Christ. Are you being truthful? Are you showing grace? All that's important. And it's easier to do when you're solid. When you're on shaky ground, it's hard to hold that, that pattern or do any of those things. But I'd say let's make sure today that our lives are built on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ so that we can stand against all the evil in this world that's going on today and that we can discern what is truth and what is not. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you today and we lift this day to you, Father, once again. So thankful for the beautiful weather, the rain that nourished our, our grounds and our crops. Father, I thank you for your presence here today, Father, that we feel it throughout this building. Thankful for all the people that came to be in worship and praise to you, Father. And I pray today that each and every one of them here today, that, that they are building their lives on the foundation of Jesus Christ, that, that they are solid. Father, that we won't be swayed one way or another toward a sinful life or sinful things that we say. But Father, let us be the light. Let us be a light for you that people may see Jesus Christ shining through us out to others and encouraging them through your truth that things will be better and they can have a better life if they just seek you. Father, I pray today that everything we did, uplifting, glorifying, and pleasing to you, we ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.